Hey everyone, and welcome back to our latest video in our Prince Fact series, the series where we take a deep, funky dive into every one of Prince's albums. Today, we're looking at the album that was Prince's freedom moment, the album that he considered his grand statement and magnum opus, the most music he'd released in one go at any point in his career to date, and his first post Warner Brothers project. Freedom is a beautiful thing. We're talking about emancipation. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. So if you're ready, we can kick it joint to joint. Let's go. So, as we mentioned in the last video, we can technically consider the Emancipation Era to have started in 1995 before Chaos and Disorder was released. That's because at a party at Paisley Park in 1995, Prince gave out a tape containing the songs Slave and New World. Two interesting facts about that. One is that New World was at one point slated to be the name of an album. It's not clear if this was envisioned as a different album, or if it's the same album that ultimately became Emancipation. But in an interview with Uptown Magazine in 1995, Maite stated that New World was the name of an album, described it as techno-influenced, and both the songs New World and Mr. Happy were thought to have been on this album. Now, the second fun thing about that party is that it was at that exact party where the live take of the song Days of Wild was recorded, which later ended up on the 1998 Crystal Ball set. Yet another fact about New World is that we might have seen it released even earlier, because Prince wanted to include it as the B-side to The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. However, the terms of Prince's freedom to release one song outside of Warner Brothers at that time meant exactly that, one song, meaning he could not include New World, but he could include remixes of The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. So if you listen to the remix that's simply titled Beautiful, you can hear that it's stylistically similar to New World. It's an up-tempo dance track that's musically much closer to New World than it is to the original song. Speaking of parties at Paisley Park, at a different party in 1995, Prince told the audience that popular producer Dallas Austin, known for his work with Madonna and TLC amongst others, would be producing the Emancipation album, and that the album would contain 52 songs and cost $80, advising attendees to save their money. Of course, Dallas did not end up producing the album, and the album ultimately contained 36 songs, not 52, but it's very interesting to think of what might have been. So. If Prince knew at this point that there was 52 songs, what songs ultimately got cut from Emancipation? Well, luckily we have this handwritten track list written by Prince that was shared by Steve Park, Prince's photographer and art director, a few years ago. On this track list, we can see that the songs Journey to the Center of Your Heart, Feel Good, She Gave Her Angels, Into the Light, Dig You Better Dead, Stone, Heart in My Hand, With God as My Witness, Funky Design, Extraordinary, Coincidence or Fate, Van Gogh, A Thousand Hugs and Kisses, If It Ain't Gut Bucket, I Will, and Goodbye all appear on this track list. If you were keeping count, that's 16 songs that don't appear on the released Emancipation, bringing the total to exactly 52, just like Prince said. But we could get even more wild because there's a few more songs that were considered for Emancipation but got cut before the track list we showed above. And those songs include I Am The DJ, 2020, and Slave To The System, which is a different song to Slave that appears on the album. In fact, at first, those two songs didn't even have similar names because Slave was originally titled Slowly Candle Burns. Additionally, in our Uncovering Prince interview with Hans Martin Buff, who was the principal engineer on Emancipation, he revealed that another unreleased song that Prince mentioned a few times over the years named The Divine was also done in the Emancipation Sessions, and that A Million Days, which would end up coming out on Musicology in 2004, was also recorded in 1995, and so potentially could have been considered for Emancipation. Now, let's talk about the song Push It Up. Wait a second, Push It Up is from New Power Soul, not Emancipation, right? Correct. But the fun fact here is that Push It Up actually started life as a remix of the song Jam of the Year, which featured Dougie Fresh on it and at one point it was potentially going to be used as continued promotion for the Emancipation album, but that remix never came out. Now, one interesting thing to note about Emancipation is that each disc is 60 minutes long and contains 12 songs. 
Prince stated that this was based on his studies of Egyptology. So if we have any Egyptologists watching, perhaps you might be able to expand on the numerical significance here. But of course, the songs would have to adhere to very specific lengths in order to make that work, meaning that some songs might have been extended out, or more likely many of the songs were originally longer and had to be cut down. One song that we do know was cut down is the classic R&B jam right back here in my arms. While the album version clocks in at 4 minutes 33, the original version of the song was premiered on KMOJ Radio by DJ Brother Jules and clocks in at a meteor 6 minutes and 16 seconds. Let's talk about collaborations. Of course, Emancipation was the first Prince album to contain several cover songs, including the first single, Betcha by Golly Wow. But it was also very heavy on input from others. The song Somebody's Somebody was lyrically written by Brenda Lee Eager. But how did it get to Prince? Well, Brenda was a close friend of Mavis Staples and gave her the lyrics for Mavis to potentially record. Mavis shared them with Prince and the rest is history. Now, the song Soul Sanctuary was actually a reworking of a song called Sanctuary by Sandra St. Victor, who also contributed to several other songs done around that time. Sanctuary was originally supposed to be the title track for Sandra's album release on Elektra Records in 1993, but that project was cancelled. Sandra has since released the original album online, and what's really interesting is that the original version of Sanctuary is a much funkier, upbeat cut compared to the dreamier ballad that Prince turned it into. We'll link to it below in the description so you can hear it. Speaking of collaborations, another song on the album also started out as a collaboration but didn't end that way. The song Email began life as an instrumental jam between Prince and Michelle Nadeg Cello, although she doesn't appear on the final version. It's thought that Prince wasn't happy with Michelle being signed to Warner's via Madonna's Maverick label, and that's why she didn't appear on the released song. Another collaboration that was envisioned was with Wendy and Lisa. Now you might know that the song In This Bed I Scream is noted in the credits as being dedicated to Wendy, Lisa and Susanna. But what you may not know is that Prince originally sent the song to Wendy and Lisa for their musical input. According to Wendy and Lisa, they sent their input on the song over to Prince, but they never heard back from him and their parts were never used. Finally, let's talk about the singles. Although the only official singles from this album ended up being Betcha by Golly Wow and The Holy River, there were three other songs issued as promotional singles to radio. Those songs are Somebody Somebody, Face Down, and I Can't Make You Love Me. Of these three, Face Down was actually intended to be the full third retail single from the album, and Prince even made the official remix, The Money Mix. I Can't Make You Love Me was also intended to appear on the Face Down Maxi single, as well as two remixes of The Holy River, which remain officially unreleased. Unfortunately, a corporate restructuring of EMI Records, who Prince had licensed the album to, meant that this single was cancelled and all further promotion of the album ended at that point. So it was at this point that Prince took promotional matters into his own hands. In 1997, Prince released the live cassette tape of two songs recorded live in New York City, Jam of the Year and Face Down. My copy is still sealed, as you can see, and it's one of my favorite Prince promo items. Now the cassette next to it is another awesome Emancipation era promo, and it's a cassette of the Holy River that was given out to customers who shopped at Borders bookstores. The cool thing about this tape is it also contains the song Welcome to the Dawn, the acoustic version, of course. And that's it for another episode of Prince Facts. This one was pretty intense to put together because Emancipation was such a colossal project. You know that we're huge fans of this album here at The Violet Reality, and so we had a lot of fun putting together the information for this incredible album. Because there's so much information out there, there's a few things that we chose not to mention and probably lots more rare information out there. So if you know something awesome about this record that we didn't cover in this video, make sure to drop it in the comments, as well as telling us what your favorite song on Emancipation is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. We'll catch you next time for more facts. Peace and be wild.
Hey, St. Paul here. Make sure you go subscribe to The Violet Reality, the funkiest channel on YouTube.